Okay. Now, on to the interaction with the panel. Um, po, uh, Secretary Lorenzana regrets that none of his staff would be able to represent him in the interaction portion. However, we will find ways of forwarding the questions addressed to him, uh, securing his response, and uh, of course, disseminating them to the participants. Um, we will now flash on screen the questions no, uh, that we gathered uh, from the chat box and from Facebook. Uh, Secretary, the first question, please. First question, please. Um, etong, uh, we'd like to take one question at a time, Sana, pero mukhang related ito, uh, Professor Lara. Uh, from Mah Mahaduddin Sumpingan, uh, is IA working with the Ministry of Public Order and Safety in dissolving Rido in the barn? No? And uh, tinundan po a related question ni Ma'am Arlene Sevilla ng Tacos, given the data shared, how do you find the role of BARM in addressing the violence occurring in the region amidst the decommissioning and surrendering of arms? Uh, Sir Pancho? I will, uh, very quick response to the first question. Yes, we do work, provide information and data in POS, MAFAR, MIFA, especially the Bank Samoro Human Rights Commission. But we also spend a lot of our time working directly with local governments, uh, provincial and at the city and municipal level. So that's the, the answer to the first question. Uh, do we work to resolve RIDO? Well, we hope that the information we provide provides ample basis for people to begin working on issues related to land conflict. We did give uh, data, for example, to the city of Marawi and to people who were involved in camp transformation project that indicates the competing land claims in many areas that would be causing a lot of the clan fielding that you will see. Second, how do you find the role of BARM? Well, they could do much, much more than what they're doing right now. And in the case of the decommissioning uh, process, I think especially when it comes to that, you know, to, to implement what has been agreed, and to also uh, come up with stronger guarantees about the behavior of its own actors. That's really the problem. The past uh, years, in, uh, after 2019, had seen an increase in violence associated with armed groups that are actually rather uh, uh, what, how do you call it? influenced by uh, key leaders of the BPA. And uh, I think uh, that should be a particular focus of work as well. Thank you, uh, Sir Pancho. Uh, Ma'am Amina, there are two questions for you. Um, the next slide, please. Uh, isa po galing sa Facebook, isa from, uh, uh, no, the slide before that. After that. Ayan. Okay. Uh, hindi yata ito, uh, the one about the role of women, no? So, uh, paki not not that. Uh, next, I, uh, can, can I just do the slide sharing for this one? It's the questions on, uh, in light of the coming elections and the likely extension of BARM. Uh, can you show that slide na lang, Aubrey, please? Uh, Aubrey? Sige. Uh, Hi, Mars, ako, yes, sige. I will, I, I will. Uh, lang, or ako, ako na lang. Ako, ako na <laughs> Okay. Pero i ano lang para makita natin. Yan. Parang kailangan palakihin niya. Okay. How do we yung presentation mode Here. kanina? Ah, sige. So, Ma'am Amina, uh, dalawang questions from Cotabato po. Mukhang related. So, sinilagay na lamin, ng namin sa isang slide. In light of the upcoming elections and the likely extension of the BPA, what can governments do to empower women in their role of helping uh, of helping keep peace in their communities, particularly in BARM? And then related to that, what can CSO-led women blocks do to contribute to the security in Mindanao? Mama Amina? Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, let me take the second one first. Uh, what can uh, CSOs, especially uh, women-led or women's organizations do to contribute to the security in Mindanao. And I would say to you to continue what they've been doing since conflict erupted in many of our communities in Mindanao. 
this is nothing new. The fact that there is a UN CR 1325 is in large part due to the activism, such as those of the women in Mindanao. And all of this led to a gathering of enough influence to push governments of the world to unanimously approve the UNSCR 1325 and the activism of the women in Mindanao who sought peace for their families and their communities. This is what led to government finally establishing after much consultation with all sectors, the National Action Plan for Women, Peace and Security. So what can women in Mindanao do to continue what they have done over the past decades, not allow themselves to be muzzled, and also to continue lobbying government so that government does keep its promise, which is related to the first question in light of the upcoming elections, what can government do? Well, plain, plain and simple, is to put their money where their mouth is. Government has approved a national action plan on women, peace, and security. We have laws that are you know, re requiring government, for instance, um, and this is a law that was um, uh, authored by my mother, calling for government to uh, provide a percentage share of its um, uh, budget to the empowerment of women and not for salsa dancing or exercising, but to real initiatives that empower women. So if the only thing that government does is to follow the law and follow their commitments that they have made internationally, both at the UN level and in ASEAN, then we women should have the resources and the support that we need to do what we do, which is to protect our families, protect our communities by making sure there is a lessening of conflict and establishing a just peace. The other thing, uh, specifically for BARM, please support adult literacy program. Please expand because in the, in the country, BARM has the highest level of adult illiteracy. You know, if 50% if of your adult population can't read or write, who is going to provide them employment as BARM progresses? You will be importing workers who can read and write from provinces outside. And if you think this is going to help the peace, or prevent conflict, well, you better think twice. Thank you. Ma'am Abina, meron pong related na questions. Uh, can you show the next slide, Aubrey? Kasi election din ito, no? Uh, hindi yan. Hindi yan. Yung tanong ni Meme. Hindi uh, nag update uh, ng real-time mag. So I will just... Uh, Okay. okay. Yes, can you just uh, refresh para lang makita? Oo. Pakiulit. <laughs> nang gugulo na naman si Memen? Hindi po, <laughs> hindi lang gugulo. <laughs> <laughs> Sige, uh, so that slide is actually uh, I think the long tanong eh from Arlene uh, and uh, from Memen po, no? So ayan, sabi Anong po? Meron daw po bang women political parties that are fielding candidates in the next year's elections in the BARM or in Mindanao, no? And then, uh, parang, I think you, you already spoke to this, but just in case may mga madagdag pa po kayo, uh, go back, please. Okay, how will the women in Mindanao engage with government in ensuring that their voices be counted or heard as well as play active roles in the forthcoming 2022 election? From Arlene Sevilla naman po. Yeah. Yes, ma'am Amina. Well, first, uh, for men, um, I don't think that having a women's political party right now uh, is going to work. We don't have the resources. We don't have the expertise yet, but it might come. Um, and what I could advise all of the women um, who are listening to us 
is to continuously engage at the community level, bring other women in, and take a very serious look at the candidates that you know put their money where their mouth is. You know full well because you, you've lived with them, you've worked with them, you know who does what he says, who, shall we say, walks the talk. If the only thing that we women could do is to support candidates like that, that's already an important first step. But uh, this is not to say that we shouldn't dream of having a woman's political party. I certainly am dreaming of that someday, Memin. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Sir Pancho, yung next question po para sa inyo. So in case you want to add some data to Ma'am Amina's response, pa naman po. But can we just share that next slide uh, for Sir Pancho po? So ayan po. Meron daw po pa kayong naobserbahan sa BARM na mekanismo o pamamaraan upang alamin ang sistema ng pamamahala at paggasta ng mga opisyales no, ng BARM. I think that's as IA. Yes. Uh, uh, can you hear me, guys? Yes, sir. We can hear okay. you. Sir. Well, the question to the to this uh, the answer rather to this question is simple. No, um, there isn't actually uh, a mechanism that if you're talking about a system where you have an automatic audit and oversight over these uh, issues, I think there are formal mechanisms that are being developed within the firm. But I think uh, again. Uh, you will notice that uh, a lot of issues have uh, been raised in the past few months about the monitoring of funding. Even the senators and congressmen want to audit the costs. Uh, I'm not saying that there are problems in terms of that, but you know it would help to actually strengthen these oversight mechanisms, especially because the trust fund is not something to that the amount you're talking about. You're running at two billions. You no know, requires a lot of accountability. Uh, secondly, I'd like to add some data to what Amina said. I think Amina's presentation was spot on in terms of putting front and center the role of women, especially at this critical juncture. You know? uh, first of all, I remember those years when multiple burdens was the main framework in understanding women's roles. No? When we have to recognize that those multiple burdens have become even heavier in the current situation. There's yeah. multi multiple burdens in the household. There, that has increased and worsened during the time of the pandemic because of the lockdowns that added to the roles and tasks of women. And that's now being sharpened as well by the entry of violent extremism. Make no mistake about it, the threat to women's freedoms is very real. If we have a Taliban type of tendency mm -hmm. circulating a set of policy desks, within the uh, barn and the BTA needs to be given attention. And then we have found information that links the role of women-headed households in the struggle against violent extremism. We're testing association to determine causality, but th there is a strong association between women-headed households and the onset of violent extremism at the local level. So those are things that are worth noting, but more importantly, I think, in the case of what is happening right now, women will play an active role in rolling back what I mentioned earlier as a growing uh, you know, uh, a turn towards traditional and even more conservative values. And the next question related here is what will we do to obvious attacks against the LGBT? Several people have already been killed. We know of an incident where a lesbian's uh, hair was shaved in public in the presence of uh, security forces of the MILF uh, in a public forum. No? So mm. what are we going to do about this? So this, you know, strengthens the case for, you know, pushing forward the issue of, you know, of uh, women and, of course, adjacent institutions, such as those in reference to the LGBT community. Mm. Yeah. Well, Mamina, you want to... Um, uh continue uh, that conversation yeah. with Sir uh, yeah, Go ahead, Paul. The, well, the reason that I just recommended uh, for Kusug Mindanao to fully support 
uh, the implementation of the National Action Plan for Women, Peace and Security for all of our provinces and regions is because much of these problems are addressed in that action plan. The problem of violence against women, the, the problem of uh, prevention from participating in, in elections, uh, the security of the frontliners, these are uh, within the action plan. So plain and, and simple, since national government has the plan, local governments have already approved their versions of the plan. And if the only thing we did is to call for its full implementation, lahat yon medyo sagot na. But to, um, to uh, respond to uh, Pancho's observation, I couldn't agree more. The fall of the Taliban has really um, made our space a little smaller. And the defense, uh, defensive wall protecting our civic space, our democratic space, a little bit more fragile. And if we're looking at the coming elections and those we're going to elect, we have to make sure that those that we support, those that we vote for, are going to be those with a record of protecting civic space, protecting human rights, protecting our democratic space. Because if we don't, then the lesson uh, of Taliban, we are going to see that taking root in, in our own communities. But Pancho, um, I still say that we have to worry a lot more about the CPP, NPA, and DF, because they are the ones with a bigger reach. And uh, from my conversations with uh, some of our friends in the AFP, um, they are very well organized. They know how to fundraise. In fact, there was an estimate that um, their yearly take from their business tax uh, is over a billion a year. None of the violent extremist groups ever uh, can ever dream of having that kind of uh, financing capability. Thank you, Ma'am Amina. Um, uh, before we move to the next slide, let me just quickly po ano lang, uh, Let me just read some of the comments dito sa chat box na hindi na pinasok sa slides, no? But they're good feedback uh, to recognize. Uh, Memen got my son adds her uh, her appreciation of uh, Mom Amina's presentation, putting names and faces to women in Mindanao's history with impact on peace and security. No, uh, Haji Balahadia agrees with Pancho. Sabi niya, true at Pancho, especially girls were observed to be recruited into violent extremist groups. No, um, uh, si Nino Sagukom sends his. Uh, Thanks for the in advance for the copy of the presentation. So to everyone, we will make sure that you get copies of the presentations as well as the proceedings, of course, of this conference. Um, see, Sir Mah Mahaduddin uh, Sumpingan agrees with Ma'am Amina. It's time to re relaunch the adult literacy programs like Magbasa Kita. Dr. Rebolios uh, says, regarding the increase of Bausi cases during the pandemic, yung kay Pancha, no? We need to see the efficacy or functionality of Bausi death in the barn. No? So let me just, uh, yun lang, inacknowledge ko lang. But I'd like to move to the next slide now. Kasi I think there are questions there na pang kusog Mindanao. And Ma'am Amina, palagay ko, you can take the initial lead in, in this muna. No? So from Facebook, can kusog Mindanao be a crime, terrorism, and corruption watchdog in barn? And how is Kusug Mindanao coordinating with all government agencies to address big capital BIG problems inside the region? Ma'am Amina? I think that is not the role played by Kusug Mindanao. Uh, Kusug Mindanao, the dream has always been this is a um, forum that unites all sectors of Mindanao behind a common agenda. So when you go into specifics like this, baka madistong ka ang Kusug Mindanao. However, there are organizations already that are watchdogs. So for instance, uh, Pancho 
the international alert together with the world bank they do have a monitoring system for armed conflict and uh, terrorism when it goes into corruption we have a national network that has been very good at monitoring and this is the uh, transparency action network and uh, we could link up with them and find out if they can have a more robust monitoring mechanism for us in Mindanao. As far as uh, crime is concerned, eh, kadami-dami ng mga organisasyon dyan na nag nagka-crime watching daw. So siguro, piliin na lang ninyo kung sino yung pinakamagaling and let's see how you can support them. But um, when in regards to coordinating with government agencies, I think that is one of the roles that Kusug Mindanao does play. And that's by getting all of the ideas from the sectors of Mindanao, having a consensus and lobbying with government agencies to address the big um, problems. But if I just might uh, make a, um, uh, a, what you call it, a call to action, um, it's really good that we're talking about this and uh, making plans to have an agenda that we can uh, propose to the incoming uh, government. But first, I think maybe we should register to vote. <laughs> And we should have uh, a lot more um, support for groups that are doing civic education so that we do not waste this power of uh, being able to vote. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I think the next slide is for uh, Professor Pancho. Pero bago ko po babasahin, uh, ma'am, uh, ma Amina, si XX de Gapioso po, uh, gusto lang niya i-share na BARM already has a regional action plan on the WPS and there is a need for localization in all the LGUs. And she thanks you for really emphasizing that women are key in all this that we are discussing. Okay. Um, so next question po for uh, Professor Lara. Uh, uh, Sir Pancho, ito yung tanong, no? Has International Alert monitored any incidents of recruitment to terrorist organizations online? But uh, hindi na ito nakalagay dito. Merong dagdag na tanong si Memen Gatmaitan. Baka pwede i in mo na rin, sabi niya. For Professor Lara, sorry I missed the relation between women-headed household and violent extremism. Are you saying that they are the most vulnerable to recruitment to GE? So yun two questions po na yun, Sir Pancha, please. Uh, let me answer the first one uh, about uh, uh, terrorism. Monitoring online. Probably. Yes, of course, we monitor uh, incidents. The critical events monitoring system that we established in 2018 gathers real-time information, indicators of potential flashpoints that will happen, and it is connected to an early response network that is composed really of DRRM, leaders across different municipalities in Mindanao. We are strong mm. in the Lanao del Sur and Lanao Norte boundary areas. Mm. Uh, we are also strong in the SPMS box and we have the same operating in, in uh, Pasinan. Now, what, what is clear there is that, you know, a lot of these uh, operations are also being thwarted by our security forces. So we must first applaud the role of the security forces. That decline in violence starting from 2017, had a lot to do. Uh, civil society groups may not like this, but we tested this repeatedly statistically by the martial law that was conducted. It did arrest the rise in violence mm. in Mindanao across the board. It was the only thing that was able to do that across the board from 2017 going down. And then it was followed right after it ended at the end of 2019, three months later, you should remember a lockdown was put in place. Again, those periods where you have you know, tended to snuff out violence. But there are worrying signs that that is not sustainable. You cannot do a lockdown all the time. And you cannot certainly, as we've said, you know, ignore the fact that lockdowns create new problems, such as the effect on women and children, the increase in violence there. And you could see spikes happening during ECQs and then a decline mm. after ECQs are you not. Know, are actually loosened up. So there's a very strong correlation between the two. But indeed, recruitment continues to happen. We just finished actually a one and a half year 
survey and interview where we interviewed people from the other side, those who joined ISIS, especially the women who joined ISIS. Yeah. It's a fascinating study and it looks at yeah. the two ends. First, those who joined at the outset of Marawi and those who joined when they were already losing. Those who joined the group of Abu Dhabi because two oh. recruitments, two waves of youth members joined. We also interviewed MILF youth, had to say, who joined that war. And we interviewed parents of MILF youth who were MILF themselves, had been decommissioned, who lost their sons in Marawi because their sons felt that the ideology and the belief that is being pushed forward by ISIS was much better than any of the previous subnational or nationalist groups within the Banks of Moro region. And that is a worrying sign and it continues to happen. There are, as I said in the report, actually good news. In some areas like Sulu, they actually were able to neutralize it. We saw how the, the security forces were able to thwart the entry of the Daula Maute into the Parang corridor at the height of the wall in 2017. Field units played an important role in that regard. This is not to discount the valiant peace building role that has been played by various civil society groups and NGOs in Mindanao. But we have to recognize groups that should be uh, lauded for the work that they did during this entire time. And they continue to be faced by problems. In the, the, for example, in the normalization process, a lot of the uh, our colleagues in the security forces question the entire process of the normalization in terms of the decommissioning aspects. Of course, they will not raise that in public, but there are very valid points that they raise. And I am glad that recently UPA raised those issues in terms of the decommissioning process. All of these are tied up to the problem of violent activism. Now, the second question, I'm sorry, I forgot already. Uh, <laughs> you really elaboration, okay. yes. Yeah, well, Women-headed households. We looked at women-headed households in particular areas where there was data available, and we found out that in those areas, violent extremism was low. Now, the question is this. Is violent extremism low because of women-headed households, or are women-headed households the product of low incidence of violent extremism? The direction of causality is not yet clear at the moment, and we've been testing this for two years, apart from developing a polarization index so that's something that is, uh, if we are able to do this, that polarization index at least gives us signs of when situations are so polarized. And we checked that recently. The reason I raised the LGBT issue was in one major survey we conducted among the youth, we asked one question, Likert Scale, do you, you know, should you uh, join an organization that has LGBT members among them? Uh, okay. And the answer was, the no, uh, extremes, no, uh, fully agree, fully disagree, and fully disagree was at eighty percent. Eh? And we were saying that's not a case of polarization; that is a case of repression. Under these conditions, you would worry about the rights of LGBTs in these particular areas, and that is a major area of concern. Because remember, the reason why women's issues are being focused in the light of Taliban because the most explicit manifestation of violent extremism in the context of Af Afghanistan was how women were treated, how they were imprisoned, how they were executed, how they were, uh, no, uh, no rights. And mind you, this one and a half year research we conducted gave us really worrying signs of some communities in the Bangsamoro where the thinking is indeed, women should no longer go out except in the company of men. Some communities that will say no, Let's give them, you know, uh, more. And, and, and this is in a place where, you know, has traditionally been the area of Tarhata Lukman. Uh, you know, Amina talked about, you know, Tata, and she just died recently. And, you know, these things are happening in those areas. So it's a, it's a worrying trend. Thank you, Sir Pancho. Um, next slide, Bo. Uh, I think it's for... Uh, Aubrey, are you there? I, I think uh, yes, we're I'm not here sure now. Ah, yes, uh, the power is back. Because the power can be <laughs> Okay, Aubrey, can you share that next slide? I think it's for Miss Amina. Um, 
And the question is, uh, basahin ko na lang po, ma'am, para kasi it's about Kusog Mindanao again, no? Does Kusog Mindanao have a way to audit or influence BARM to check how well the authorities are governing the region? No? So parang watchdog role ili, pero, pero specific huh. yata to. And how transparent they are sa kanilang efforts to coordinate with AFP and PNP to achieve lasting peace in BARM. Well, uh, again, um, Kusug Mindanao essentially is a lobby group. Uh, we're a unifier, a unifying platform, developing consensus, and then we lobby with national government, with uh, governments, um, local governments, to make sure that Mindanao gets its uh, due and equitable uh, share. So in that sense, Kusug Mindanao does have a way to influence BARM. The fact that many of the representatives from BARM are with us, and I believe they consider themselves to be part of Kusug Mindanao, already shows the, the link. So yes, yes we can, because we, are, uh, we, we work by, by consensus. Um, with regards to transparency of their their efforts, uh, that I think is important to, uh, well, I guess have some talks with the civil society organizations within BARM at the community level because they would have better inputs on, on this particular um, uh, question regarding the efforts to coordinate. Um, but uh, based on the conversations that I've had with OPAP, uh, OPAP recently created a multi-sector governance uh, council, bringing different sector representatives together, including um, uh, the Defense Secretary of uh, the Office of uh, the Department of National Defense, um, the ILG, for instance, so there is an attempt at the national government leather, uh, level to try and get uh, some kind of coordination, if only uh, at the policy level, to influence and improve the way that OPAP is implementing its mandate. So there are efforts. But uh, if um, any of you uh, remember uh, the network that was called Bantay Bayanihan, this was during the time of President uh, Aquino. The Armed Forces of the Philippines and many civil society organizations, PCID was one of uh, these organizations, got together and formed this collaborative effort to monitor and to give suggestions on security sector reform. So perhaps um, you can find out whether the Bantay Bayanihan network is op still operating in your area. And if not, perhaps lobby for the re-establishment of the Bantay Bayanihan. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Amina. Um, we do have questions for, for uh, Secretary Lorenzana, no? but uh, because nga wala siyang representative, what we will do is... Uh, We'll flash this on the screen. We'll acknowledge them. And like I said, Kanina, we will find ways of, of getting them to Secretary Delfin. And maybe uh, as soon as you get a response, we will, try, we will include that in the documentation. No? But I, I think also in case may naisabihin dito si uh, Professor Lara at saka si Ma'am Amina, uh, pwede rin naman po. So from Mahadudin Sumpingan, sabi po ni, niya ay, how can we fast-track normalization? Kasi based daw sa information na nakuha niya, only 100,000 daw po ang allotment nito sa GAA, no? Si Haji Balahadja naman, sabi ni Haji, how will the AFP deal with its officers and personnel who openly campaign in social media as early as now to support the candidacy of Bongbong Marcos for president, no? Kasabi mm -hmm. lang kanina, di ba? Uh, neutral tsaka apolitical, no? And then the third question from uh, Pendililang Gunting, no? uh, to what extent no? uh, will the uh, Defense Department prevent vote buying and hauling of voters from other places? Because this practice extremely affects women to venture in politics. No? So uh, 
pwedeng i-care of na natin kay Secretary Lanzana, pero kung may naisabihin si uh, Sir Pancho kasi, or si Ma'am Amina with respect to these three, I uh, will give them a few minutes. Well, I, I can, I can uh, hazard a response yung sa tanong ni Haji Balahadia at si uh, Pendililang Gunting. And these acts are illegal. So ang AFP at ang Department of National Defense uh, who followed the law, meron na yung sistema in place to run after those who violate the mandate of their, their agencies. A problema lang, sino magsusumbong? Uh, matapang ba tayo to go to them and tell them, oh, eto nakita namin itong ebidensya. Kasi kung walang mag-o-offer ng testimony, walang mag-witness, wala ding magagawa ang mga nasa authority. So yes, may sistema na yan. Pag nag-violate ng law, kailangan uh, ma-penalize. Pero kailangan uh, tayo rin, nakikita natin itong mga uh, acts na illegal acts na ganito, we also have to do something about it. I'll answer, the, yes, I'll, answer the first, I'll only answer the first question. Okay. Yes, sir. the normalization process can be speeded up. Actions are being taken at the moment based on what we know to actually speed it up. But those actions include reforming some of its provisions. So when I said a while ago that the problem right now is that they're renegotiating something that should actually be been, been, been implemented, there is some point to discussing some of the changes that need to be done. And one of the major issues pertains to this amount, okay? Because the real problem right now is each combatant is supposed to receive one million yeah. for uh, the decommissioning process. And then 100,000 of that will be in cash. And a couple of months ago, we surfaced data that showed that because of the 100,000 re-entry cash that was being given, None of the combatants were actually doing away with their weapons and in fact were buying mm. weapons. Mm. And that, is, that has been validated. We got a lot of pushback. We got stick from the BTA. They were angry at us, even OPA. Then recently, they came out in a statement actually validating what we said in the sense that they said that there were problems in terms of the target numbers. If you had 40,000 combatants, it is ludicrous to say that 40,000 combatants will only have 12,500 weapons. And it is further ridiculous to say that out of those 12,500 weapons, only half of them will be decommissioned because they're the ones issued by the organization. The responsibility of the partner is to make sure that weapons are decommissioned, okay, for the 40,000 combatants. And of course, the military knew that. And the military mm. knew that they themselves did not admit, you know, agree to 40,000 and yet there are only 12,000 weapons. But that's the situation right now. So action can be taken to do those reforms. But more importantly, if the government is implementing the program, it should be implemented already in terms of the phasing should not be stopped. The problem was it was delayed because of the issues raised by the partner regarding the extension of uh, the Bank of Moro, no? So that was a uh, non-starter in terms of the normalization. Secondly, make sure that the 100,000 pesos is not used to buy new weapons. Hmm. Thank you, uh, Sir Pancho. Sir, there's one more question, uh, uh, and this is going to be the last question for this round. Um, can you show that, Aubrey? Uh, it's the one for, uh, you have to refresh kasi hindi yata. Uh, please refresh. Hindi siya lumagaw. So, babasahin ko na lang habang nire-refresh. It's from Dr. Akram Latif. Sabi po ni uh, Sir Akram, uh, meron po bang indication that violent extremist groups are using the slow rehabilitation of Marawi City as a recruitment slogan daw po? Sir Pancho, did you come across this? Yes, uh, they're tapping the the failures in the rehabilitation process for their recruitment. Remember, we did interview young people who joined because they were disgusted with the destruction of Marawi, okay? Those group of young uh, members who joined Abu Dhar, 
towards the end, no? when he, when Maute was already in retreat, some of them raised the issue about their disgust that the Islamic city of Marawi had been destroyed. So that is connected to equal disgust among people about the, the slow pace of the rehabilitation process. So yes, it's being tapped, but we all know that that is only one part of the picture. Another part is the opportunity for them to act. It's not online. No? There was a question a while ago. Much of the recruitment is not online. The recruitment is still face-to-face. -face, and most of the recruitment is through kinship networks, which means mm -hmm. that the clans will play an important role. Because the clans were the first line of defense against the recruitment of their youth into such groups. However, it can also work in another way. Clan connections can also facilitate the recruitment of young people. Cousins, brothers, you know, recruited easily through that. So it's face-to-face, -face. it's not online. Thank you, Sir Pancho. Uh, I acknowledge ko lang po yung isang punto dito from Butch Camarinas ng UNDP. I think uh, ito yung kanina sa discussion on normalization. Habi po ni Butch, there is already a discussion between parties regarding a possible small arms and light weapons program for the firearms owned by the DF members. So thank you for that information, Butch. Memen, you have a question on uh, yung uh, form of DF to surrender, pero mukhang hindi na natin ito masatakal ngayon. We will find ways of getting this responded to. I just want to acknowledge na may nag-thank you sa Kusog Mindanao from Facebook, si Sir Gerardo Wallace. And kung kanina po, uh, uh, nag-express nag na appreciation si Myla Liguro at si uh, Nemen Gatmaitan kay Ma'am Amina for showing the names, faces, and voices and stories uh, ng women. Uh, si XX Dagapioso po, so, babasahin ko lang sabi ni XX kay Sir Pancho. Sir Pancho, as always, you have emphasized data is important in ensuring that we can change policies and programs that lead to attaining the changes that we wish to see in the communities. We will all help in popularizing data, but the challenge for all of us is on how to ensure those data changes the context up ahead. No? 